Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my fancy faceted box. Um, I had a little play with it. It didn't quite turn out how I wanted. Um, but either way, my adhesive doesn't seem to stick either. So I'm thinking that potentially wet glue is going to be the way forward with this. Um, but as you can see, why am I a bit on the skew with? Let me just sort this out. Um, so yes, as you can see, um, my little box houses a little lint bunny um, and then you just simply fold those over and clasp together the top. As I said I think wet glue is the way forward. I tried um, seal plus and I've tried a glue dot but I think the way I want my paper to stay isn't strong enough so I think wet glue and pegs is the way forward. But isn't it just cute and adorable and just completely different? Um, yeah, I, I really like it. I think it's really cute. So let's let's go ahead and make it because it's not particularly tricky, but it might be a little bit sort of time involved. <laughs> so I'm going to be brave, actually, for this one. Originally, I was just going to go with plain and boring pink or a cocoa rose. Um, but then when I saw this side, I thought I'm really going to be brave and have a go at doing it with a pattern. So let's see how this plays out. So you need a sheet of your DSP that is six and a quarter by nine and a half inches or 16 and a half by 25 and a half centimeters. You want to score the short side, this being the bottom, at two and a quarter and four and a half nearly two and a quarter, four and a half, which is six and 12 centimetres. Then on the long side, you want to score at two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters and nine. And in centimetres, that will be six, 12, 18 and 24. Okay, now comes the fun part. So, I am bringing back in my saucer. Do you remember this from the previous uh, projects that I've used? Um, it's the same, this one is a six, in, uh, six inch diameter. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that I felt was that my reels of ribbon that I've also used in the past were too wide, too sharp, and I needed something that was gonna be slightly longer does that make any kind of sense? I'm hoping it does. So anyway, so with your beautiful um, paper, let's fold and burnish these score lines just so that it makes life easier for you to see what's going on. So we're going to fold and burnish all of these. So the bottom pieces here, oh, that's an epic fail on my proportion because that's going to be the base. So <laughs> that didn't really work, did it? I was sort of hoping it might be a bit more like that, but never mind. We'll carry on. So the bottom section's here. And we're simply going to slice up to your score line. And they will stay whole as they are. And then we're just going to get rid of this here. Okay, what we're then going to do, back in again with our good old ruler. So what you need to do is mark across this top horizontal score line every half an inch, sorry, half an inch from the edge. So half an inch there, half an inch there, half an inch there which is one and a half centimetres you need to be marking. Mark there, mark there, mark there. You also want to repeat this at the top. So it is, like I said, it is a little bit time consuming, but it, it is kind of worth it because you just want to make sure that everything lines up as it should. Half there, oops, jiggled the paper and now I can't see. Half there, half there and half 
there. Then very lightly or with a pencil we're just going to join those ones up. All the way along. Some of these just never look straight when I do it. I can't understand. <laughs> I think it just must be my eyes that are wonky. Okay, so your mark here. I'm going to do them all one way so I'm not messing and it is slightly quicker. You can do them whichever you feel more comfortable doing. This horizontal line here that is now vertical, we're going to score from this point to this but that's why I'm using my saw. So I'm going to apologise if I get my head in because I need to just see for a moment. So from that point, press really hard both on the saucer and your scoring tool because, I don't know if you notice, then it will shift and then it becomes a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to go down to this one, press really hard on both, try not to go back and forth multiple times or it might end up ruining the arc that you're trying to create. Press down really hard and we're going back around again and then my last one here. Yeah, my paper's moving again, which is a real nuisance. So I've done all those that way. Now I'm going back in with my saucer now to do them all this way. And if you can see, I'm not sure because I'm trying to concentrate on this, but you can see now those arches that are being created. Press down hard. Obviously the harder you do it, the better it is because it may then only require one score of your... Where's that line? There. It may only require one score because if the chance of you going twice or three times is where you will end up with sort of several lines. I don't know if you can see on that one where it moved. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get it in the right light. But there's almost like a double line there and it is a nuisance. So you've now got your pretty marks. What you need to do now is with your scissors, those faint score lines we did, we're going to go down and cut away basically above those shapes that you've just scored okay so you're you're cutting where that center score line went up i hope i make sense sometimes i think i talk complete gibberish but hopefully it makes sense and you can follow it along easily enough Okay, and then this last one, cut that away there. So you're now left with this crazy looking shape, <laughs> which is lots of fun. Now, again, you can go ahead and try and score and fold these, but trust me, it is a little bit of a nightmare because they don't really want to go. The best way I found this to do was to pinch the paper Okay, so these two, thumb and finger behind, this one in front, pinch this crease together, but then encourage this bit to fold out. Okay, you see how it always seems to want to go that way. Okay, don't force it too hard, because obviously you're not going to be able to create that natural curve that you've just done, but it will assist slightly. Okay, once we've done that, let's get some adhesive on this strip here. And this is where you just need to recheck everything's in line because it's now all very wonky. Okay, so just ensure that's lined up. And what I did here is I just folded it again and just pressed that bit just to assist that join because it's now double the cardstock. Okay, so this is going to be the back, so I'm going to fold in the sides, the back, and then last but not least, this front piece. That is my base with all the pretty flowers on, 
just pop my hand inside there and now here this is where you're going to need your wet glue I think and some pegs put whatever goodie you want inside mine had a lint chocolate egg I've now set up my station with my tripod I can't get in my cupboard with my goodies <laughs> this is all that's left out so it's going to have to be a cream egg this time and then you can sort of fold these out of the way you want to push this corner in and pinch it okay and that is what's creating that pretty pattern I'm going to use glue dots on this occasion just because obviously I don't have time to sit and await wet glue to dry but if I did I would pop some wet glue in there and just pop one of my pegs on and just hold it until it's it's dried out basically so work your way round with your glue dot or your glue whatever adhesive you want like I said I've sort of done the trial and error here and I think wet glue is the way forward and squeeze that together my last one here try and do it all before the glue dots decide to fail on me again this last one's a little bit fiddly because you're losing space in here now to to get your fingers in but there we go and then where's the back that's the back so now you've got these extra long pieces here front and back leave as they are for now but these side ones trim off that about that much because all you want is to fold them over okay so that they fit and then these two here you are going to fold over until they meet so kind of level the tops off here and then press them down until they meet and then you can just fold them over make sure your sides are level give them a little crease and then back in we go and then use a delightful clever clasp oh I forgot to do the corner rounding now this is the best thing about this I forgot to round the corners the good thing is there's actually enough here for you to pop this in to your punch and actually do it now because this is what I did before if truth be told I completely forgot why isn't that one going in don't prove me wrong now there we go that's better Oops. Oh my God. and this is just what happens isn't it when you try and do there we go that's better and then just going to pop that one in of course this one's going to just do it first time isn't it typical so sorry yes I've rounded those corners not very well by the looks of it popped my clever clasp on and that essentially is your pretty little box and then all I have left to do here is my decoration so Rococo Rose small balloon punch and I also need that and some Whisper White I need my Hydrangea Haven and I'm going with the Thank You which is teeny tiny there it is teeny tiny sentiment that I love and I need Rococo Rose here so I'm just going to stamp that there clean that off and then I have my layering circles framelits the two small ones and whatever I've done with it my mini boss and so all I need to do that was one of the plates all I need to do then is pop that on with that and run it through 
and I am not going to have issues with this today. <laughs> Famous last words. Oh, come on now. Do you know, I did this this morning. First go, no problems. I'm going to see if it prefers going through this side. Look at that. Honestly, I think it must have like a preference or something. So that's that one. There's my little circle and then my whisper white that I'm just sort of setting off slightly and then oh, I'm gonna have the same problem on time but I'm not liking this oh no it is it is gonna go that way it clearly saw the look I was giving it that it is gonna work otherwise it's gonna be in big trouble <laughs> give it the look you know the look you give your children or maybe your your dog or your cat or whatever if you're disapproving of it a little bit of adhesive on the back there and this really is just the smidgen of an edge to it again that is going to go onto my box there and then last but not least, my little flower is going to sit on the top corner there and added to it one of the beautiful pastel pearls that can sit right in the centre. And there we have it my fancy oh, faceted box and if you are curious that's really annoying that that's not stuck this this is my prototype of the centimeter one so if i sort of hold it together it's not too dissimilar but this is the one i made with centimeters so there they have them my beautiful fancy faceted boxes. Thanks for joining me guys and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!